Hello and welcome to Shares Spotlight. I'm Daniel Coatesworth, editor of Shares magazine. Today I'm joined by David Page, chairman of the Fulham Shore. Hello David. Could you tell me how Fulham Shore differentiates itself from other restaurant companies? Well, we have two businesses within Fulham Shore, uh, The Real Greek and Frank Amanka, and in both of them we buy our produce directly from the growers in Greece and uh, Italy. And that does two things. One is we can control the, the quality of the product, so we buy the best quality, but also we can control the prices we buy at. And we can forward buy a year in advance, uh, book the crops before they've actually grown. And uh, we cut out the, the middle men, of which there are probably two or three wholesalers, um, between the countries of origin and uh, the UK. So we get our food at a better price, better quality, and so we can pass that on to the customer in lower prices. The, the restaurant sector has actually gone through some sort of tougher times recently. There's lots of chains that have expanded perhaps too fast. Also staff costs have been a big issue as well. I mean, how have you overcome sort of challenges that have sort of been facing quite a lot of the industry? Um, well, we've we haven't put our prices up much in the last two or three years, but whenever we have, it's been to cover um, increase, increases in the living wage. We pay the national living wage. Um, so all our prices increases have gone directly to the, the staff, really. Um, I can't really talk for other people, but what, what has happened in Britain over the last uh, three or four years is that uh, retailers have not been doing very well. So landlords have thought, oh, what can we do with our excess retail space and let's fill them full of restaurants. So they've made big attempts to attract uh, restaurant businesses and until a couple of years ago, restaurant businesses were doing quite well. So a lot of money poured into the restaurant sector and uh, without being rude, maybe some of the people who expanded very quickly hadn't, hadn't done it before and so made a few mistakes in terms of location and also the rents they paid. Uh, for sites, which can be a killer. What do you think is the secret to a really good, successful restaurant business? Is it getting many people as possible through the doors each day or actually having the biggest profit margins? Uh, it's very dangerous to uh, chase profit margin. Um, what you have to do is, first of all, get lots of turnover, lots of people through the door. And what you, how you do that is by offering a very good product for a very low price. And once you've got the lots of people through the door, the, 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 the margins sort of take care of themselves, really. And that's our business model in, in both the businesses we own, very high turnover. Maybe the margin in percentage terms isn't as high as other people, but because our volumes are so great, we actually make more money than, than other people, um, purely driven by customers, and more customers. So with the two brands you've got at the moment, The Real Greek and Franco Manka, do you think that's enough for you to sort of keep expanding and, and that they're enough to prop up the business? Or do you think actually in time you'll add other brands to make a much bigger sort of restaurant company? Um, uh, we did experiment last year with a third brand which didn't work. Um, we opened it and then closed it about a year later. So we, we've been a bit scarred by that experience. And we have two very successful businesses. I mean. Uh, we're going to open four or five restaurants this year and um, we'll probably open eight next year mixed between the two brands and uh, w w as long as we can find the sites at the right rents uh, we'll expand those two businesses. Um, they're very profitable. We had one restaurant that didn't make any money we closed last year um, and uh, the others are very profitable so we'll just keep opening more of them but at, at a much slower pace than other people perhaps. Hmm. From an investment perspective, lots of people over the years have been drawn to restaurant businesses because they're highly cash generative if they're successful. Mm -hmm. um, so investors in Fulham Shore, when should they expect you to start paying a dividend, assuming that you too are very cash generative? Uh, we're cash generative, but actually uh, it's better for us if we open restaurants with the cash we generate. Uh, we've currently got some debt. So the first thing we do with the money we generate is open new restaurants and maybe pay down the debt. And then when you're a slightly more mature business, uh, you might consider paying dividends. Um, we haven't been a dividend company because effectively we're EIS 
and we were prohibited from, from uh, by the EIS rules for paying dividends. Uh, that's that's finished its course now. So we would consider dividends, but actually the best thing for shareholders is to build up the value of each individual brand, and then somebody might come knocking for one or both of the brands, and that's how you actually make the shareholders money by growing the share price. Great. Well, thank you very much, David, and thank you for watching. Thank you.